Hello, I'm Rick Treitman. I'm with Adobe. With me today are Kathy Crowley, co-founder of Readability Matters, and Marjorie Jordan, also co-founder of Readability Matters. We're going to talk today about reading. And let's just start with a rhetorical question, which many of you may know the answers to. How many of our students are reading well these days? Well, it turns out that as we test them in the uh, fourth, eighth, and twelfth grades, only about a third of our kids are reading proficiently. And if we test adults, we find that over half of all adults in the United States are reading below the sixth grade level. And this is a problem. Um, the Barbara Bush Foundation for Family Literacy estimates this as at a cost of $2.2 trillion a year uh, to the U.S. in opportunity costs, uh, in the lack of ability to advance um, and other factors. So how can we make this better? It would be great if we could just give everybody a pair of magic reading glasses that turn them into readers. We'd take them to the magic reading doctor. They'd all walk out with a pair of glasses that made them read right away. And maybe they'd take a test. This is probably the test that you're used to seeing, but we want to give a different test at our magic reading doctor. We'd give a test that changed the way the text looked on the screen. Um, we could stretch it out or we could start to um, compress it. And when we got it this far compressed, what we'd be doing is we would be approximating what many people experience. It's an effect called crowding. For many people, when they look at any page of text, uh, it looks like this and it becomes very hard to read. And imagine that you're just a kid learning to read. And now imagine that you're trying to read small text and you're reading it in this crowded uh, format. Or let's make it worse. Let's put it into a hard to read font. And the font that I'm showing you right now is an approximation of the font of the very first typeset book that in certainly in Western civilization, Gutenberg's Bible. And even if I could read Latin, I'd have a hard time uh, reading this text. So, here we've got our approximation again, um, but what if I could start to manipulate this? What if I could make it larger and add some space or even change the font altogether? I think you'll agree that I have a much easier reading experience with the third example here than I certainly do at the top. And what I've just summarized is about 15 years of work that the people at Readability Matters have done, that Marjorie and Kathy have done, and that they're gonna talk to you about in a few minutes. And what they have found is that if you can take uh, reading and a reading format and give the user, give the reader control over their experience, if they can choose a font that works best for their eyes, if they can change the font to something that works well for them, if they can change the space between the lines, and most importantly, if they can change the text spacing, uh, we can start to get rid of the effects of crowding or other perceptual problems that people might have. Uh, so in fact, it is possible to create a pair of magic reading glasses if you're reading digitally. Um, and what we really want to call them is personalized reading glasses. And what we're talking to you today about is the value of personalized reading. Uh, Adobe was pretty impressed with the work that, Adobe, that Readability Matters shared with us, um, and we decided to test it for ourselves. So we built a prototype of Adobe Reader reading a PDF, but giving the user control over the experience. So what you see uh, on this iPad on the left is the original PDF uh, with a prototype UI that gives the user the ability to change it. And on the right, we have just one of the formats uh, that we could change that, that document uh, into. And we took this prototype and tested in a school in South San Jose in California. We tested with about 80 kids uh, in the third and the seventh grade. And I'm gonna show you the results of what happened in the third grade when we provided customized reading formats uh, for these students. We gave them a baseline reading test and we had a wide range of uh, abilities. We had the fastest student reading at 163 words a minute and the slowest student reading at 69 words a minute. Now, we were testing at the end of March. These kids had been in school since the beginning of September, so six or seven months of school. And if we look at our slowest student, 
uh, he was causing some concern. He was reading quite slowly. He was stumbling over the words. He was clearly sounding them out uh, one at a time. Uh, and he was at risk uh, not only of having to repeat the third grade, but at risk of never developing into a proficient reader. So we dialed in customized reading formats for the students. And these are the increases in fluency that we measured with each customized uh, format. Now notice the our slow student down at the bottom increased quite a bit. In fact, he jumped the whole category. He went out of the at-risk category and into the some risk category. And this is just with one format change um, on one day. His student, his teacher <laughs> was, was pretty happy about it, as was he. Um, but the other takeaway from this chart is that the fastest student in the class made the exact same uh, increase in reading speed. So what I want to stress here is that, yes, we can help struggling readers with personalized reading, but we can help proficient readers just as much. It may be that with the struggling student, we're learning, we're helping them learn simply to read, whereas with the proficient reader, we're helping them to read with less eye strain or with more efficiency. Another way to look at this data is that the average student in our class jumped 20 words in their reading speed. Now, a third grade child generally increases their reading speed by about one word per week throughout the year. The kids in this class averaged 20 words in reading speed, which is the equivalent of about 20 weeks of reading progress. And we did it simply by changing the reading format to one that fit them. Uh, in our test, we had five different characteristics of format that we could change. Um, you can see them here. Uh, now, the first four are fairly obvious. Character stretch means the ability to actually distort the font and either stretch it or narrow it um, and change the, um, the, line, the, the line weight um, of the stroke. We were impressed enough with this and with other research that we did that we decided to incorporate these findings into Acrobat Reader. Uh, we were working on a feature called Liquid Mode, and we added the personalization features as a result of the work that I just showed you. Liquid Mode and Acrobat Reader um, are available for iPhone and iPad uh, uh, at the App Store and also available for Android phones, Android tablets, and Play Store compatible Chromebooks. Now, we didn't get all five characteristics of control, but we did get and the important three. So you can change your font size, your character spacing, and your line height when you use liquid mode in Acrobat Reader. So let me give you a quick uh, tour of how that look, works. This is one of our research papers. And if I were to share this research paper with you and you were to pull it up on a phone, uh, you would either close it right away saying this is unreadable, or you would pinch and zoom and move around and try and keep your place. But now that we have liquid mode, clicking liquid mode would reflow the document uh, to the size of the screen, making for a much better uh, reading experience. But with the individualized settings, with the personalized uh, reading settings, you can go further. So I've clicked on the reading settings. Now I'm going to give myself a slightly larger font and I'm going to give myself a little bit more space between the characters and a little air between the lines. And I end up with a document that looks like this. So liquid mode before the personalization and after. And this is a, this is a format that works for my particular perception. So the way we look at this is we've taken a small step toward personalized reading, but we've probably raised many more questions uh, than we've answered. And that means that we need to do a lot more research to understand how uh, people read on digital devices and to continue to build tools that can help them do that. So if we go back to the example of Gutenberg, it's been about 600 years uh, since 
people have been read mass, you know, the, since massive numbers of people have been able to read printed text. Um, certainly people have been reading text for thousands of years uh, before the print, printing press. And it's only been really about 100 or maybe 150 years that researchers have looked at the mechanics of reading. Um, but now that we can change formats, we need to understand how many formats really help people. Is it an infinite number of formats or are there a handful? We don't know. Um, what are the most readable fonts? There are thousands of fonts in the world. Do two or three of them help most people or does everybody need their own personalized font? And if reading is as personal as we think it is, how do we help people find their optimized, their, their optimal uh, format? And more topically, can we use personalized reading to help the children who have lost so much schooling over the past year? Um, and we know that many of them have fallen behind in their reading. So in order to do that, Adobe has partnered and underwritten uh, the reading lab or created the reading lab really at the University of Central Florida. Uh, now we're doing this, we're, we're also underwriting the great work that Readability Matters does. And the three of us uh, have joined to create the beginning of what we call the Virtual Readability Lab at UCF. One of our uh, initial tools that we've built is a virtual reading lab online. We initially planned to have a physical reading lab where we could put eye trackers and EEG helmets on people and watch them read. But with COVID, we couldn't work with people. So we found that we invented uh, a virtual reading lab that allows us to run our reading tests online. And the value of this is that we can have hundreds, if not thousands of people uh, take part in our studies. Here are three studies that we've got up online right now. Uh, the ability for people to figure out what fonts they like, which fonts work the best for them, and what spacing works the best for them. Now, this is a framework that allows us to mount as many studies as we want. It's also a framework that we plan on opening up to researchers around the world for them to mount their own reading studies. And there are a whole suite of research tools behind this uh, that help the, that sort of give the researchers a, a tool chest um, for doing reading research without having to build it all from scratch. One of the, this is just an example of one of the first studies we did. All we did uh, was change font and we found that we could increase reading speed by 127 words a minute, which translates to almost 10 pages an hour. So imagine if you're somebody who reads for a living, like a financial analyst, um, if you can read an extra 10 pages an hour, your productivity can really jump quite a bit. Now, we see what we're doing as a partnership between industry, particularly uh, tech companies like Adobe, uh, between research and education. And you can see the number of um, researchers that we've now attracted uh, to our center at UCF um, who are working with us on various studies. And uh, we're working, as I said, uh, we're underwriting the work that Readability Matters does. And we're also working with ReadWorks and World Education and hope to attract more nonprofits uh, to, the, um, to the mission of helping the world uh, read better. We'd love to have any of you join us, um, either as educators or researchers or interested parents. Uh, you can write to me. Um, you can write to our uh, my alias, which is readable at adobe.com and perhaps easier to remember. And you can go to the readability lab at readabilitylab.xyz to play with our experiments. Uh, and, if you're in, and if you're a researcher and you're interested in putting up your own study at the Readability Lab, uh, please write to us. And with that, I'm going to invite Marjorie and Kathy back uh, to tell you a lot more about the great work that they're doing. Thanks, Rick. As we get started, we just want to thank Adobe for all the great work that they're doing in this area. You know, there are millions of PDF documents in use in education already today, and it's easy to create more. From your word processor, Save as PDF is um, an easy option to use. And so we think with all this educational content, the work that Adobe is doing to advance reading, personalized reading with the free Acrobat Reader product is incredibly valuable.
So as Rick mentioned, seven out of 10 of us could be better readers. And this is true for children and adults. It's also true uh, for good readers and for struggling readers. So when we formed, we formed as Readability Matters as a Tech for Good nonprofit. Um, Kathy and I are from tech and we want to work with tech, ed tech and publishing partners to make sure that we can make personalized reading a reality for education. So um, we do believe education is the most important use case for reading, for personalized reading. Whether you're learning to read or reading to learn, we think this is an important tool for the educator's toolbox. It will never replace good instruction. You know, phonics training and good reading strategies, these things that you teach are, are gonna continue to be important. We're just hoping to make it easier for people to uh, engage with text, have some immediate impact on reading speed and comprehension, hopefully increase some learning capacity. And we also have seen a potential to change an educational trajectory. I worked with a child um, using these solutions that had kind of gotten to the end of his frustration level with reading. And so, you know, getting to that place where you think, I'm not a good reader, I'm, I don't wanna do this, I can't be successful at it, can cause a child to sort of check out from their educational process. Making these changes allowed that child to re-engage in his learning, which we feel like is another great value that uh, personalized reading can deliver. Kathy's going to talk about some of the specific results that we've seen. Thanks, Marjorie. As both Rick and Marjorie have mentioned, personalized reading format provides great opportunities for all learners. But for students who are learning to read, this is even more impactful. We have seen dramatic gains both in fluency and comprehension. While students perform best with their personalized best reading format, we do see these changes also transfer to other formats. Cognitive scientists tell us that this has to do with their improvement in gains in orthographic processing. At Readability Matters, we are very clear that it's the material that is the issue, it's not the reader. So let's talk about some students and results we've had over the years to highlight the impact and significance of personalized reading formats. So let's talk about Henry. Early in his third grade year, Henry was identified by his teacher as bright and above grade, above reading level, but he showed fluency challenges. So during one of our tests, we presented several formats, including this one size fits all format that is commonly found in most instructional material. When Henry was reading, those red words are those that were errors, either skip words, miss words, challenges that you would find during a reading record, running record. Presented with other materials, such as format C, Henry read much more smoothly and improved his fluency from 66 words per minute to 85 correct words per minute. As you can note here, the errors in red are less significant, only just tense changes. Certainly he got much more meaning out of the word and the readings by this format. So how does this help his fluency improvement? He improved by 29%, but as a reader, he increased his speed, his accuracy and his self-correction, but he also engaged much more thoroughly and fully with the content. He showed more expression and intonation. And in fact, he interrupted the tester to tell her that these individuals shouldn't be playing chess via email. They should be playing via uh, FaceTime. Clearly, Henry did much better if he could read in format C. As we've mentioned before, both Rick and Marjorie, this is an instantaneous improvement just with finding the right format for you, you can have an instantaneous improvement. So let's talk about four additional students. Rick spent quite a bit of time talking about struggling, struggling readers early, earlier today. So let me highlight a couple other students. During one of our tests, we had a third grader who was reading in the 77th percentile, a strong reader, and had an improvement of 23% words correct per minute. Very, very significant. This bright and exceptionally strong student showed greater intonation and greater expression. And it was very telling because she, Jessie, was able to laugh at a lobster in the desert, clearly not understanding that this was really a scorpion. 
So she was much more engaged, a 77th percentile reading, improving by 23% fluency. Let's talk about an average student, a seventh grader reading in the 48th percentile. He was not engaged with school and identified by his teachers as just basically lackluster. What was most telling, he had a 23% improvement in his fluency. But what was very interesting was that he sat still, he was less fidgety reading, and he started smiling, clearly a much more confident student if he could read in this format. We also want to highlight one more student, a 70, a 99th percentile reader, a seventh grader who had a 7% improvement in her speed of accurate reading. During her pre-interview, she identified herself and said, I don't have to do additional reading. I'm already a good reader. But in her post interview, what was interesting was that she said, I like more character, the, the spacing between the characters and wider characters. I can finally see the L's and the T's. Amazing, a 7% improvement for this 99th percentile reader. So how does this work over time? So let me share a story about a student in high school. It's my daughter, an avid reader and a very strong student. By the time she hit junior year, she was slammed with the additional reading for her AP classes and pre-calc. Based on what we knew, we decided to look at personalized reading formats. The only change that she made, she didn't get any additional services, any extra test time. The only change she made was to change her work to personalized reading formats. And she once again became a, you know, a good student. She started excelling again. This inspired her to pursue a career in education. Today, she teaches teachers at a university and then she in inspires her teachers to integrate technology to make sure all of her students can excel. While reading more fluently is certainly very important, the most important value is to make sure that the students are getting more meaning out of what they are reading. In our studies to date, we have seen that students have gone from two to three word to five to six word phrases, a strong indication of improved comprehension, but we wanna learn more. So we have sponsored a cross-disciplinary research project focused on comprehension. We will be looking at the impact of typography on both word and passage level comprehension tests. This will be a remote study of 450 students and we expect results later this summer. But we do have some early pilot results that I'd like to share with you. The researchers are very encouraged with the impact of what they are already seeing in some of the semantic word tests. Let me highlight a fourth grader, a very strong reader who absolutely loves to read. Even in her testing, they were able to see dramatic results in just identified changes to word comprehension tests. We see this as valuable for both strong readers and the long-term effect of possibly imp impacting positive changes to struggling readers as well. In the future, we're hoping to bring students back into the lab so that we can use brain imaging to identify the same word and passage level tests to see changes. And we're also hoping to identify funding to allow adults to participate in this study as well. Again, we're very excited to see if potentially the impact of comprehension is improved and that this, the value of readability features and personalized reading formats can really have a positive impact long-term for all. Thanks, Kathy. No one argues about the value of strong reading proficiency. Success in education has long been used as a predictor of success in life. So the thing that we look at is what is the easiest way to get there? Expanding existing application infrastructure seems to be the most cost-effective way to deliver reading performance improvements. But we know that no one reads on just one reading platform. We need to do a good job with the technology and the way that this is managed across all of those platforms in order for it to have a chance of being implemented for education. So what do we need? We need content providers to provide 
reflowable digital text, not pictures of text. In order for Adobe Liquid Mode to work and to be able to change the size and spacing of characters, the text has to be able to flow down the page differently. We also need new testing tools. Rick mentioned this. We have to be able to quickly and easily get to what is the best reading format for each individual. When you start um, looking in the educational space, we can imagine an older student being able to take responsibility for their own reading format and what is the best for them. But for younger students, we absolutely need profiles. We need to take advantage of the, the great things that computers can do in terms of tracking a profile for each student, what is the best reading format for that student, and then serving up the content in that student's best format. I did this process for a young child and I can assure you it is not a process that you wanna take on one at a time. No teacher should have to do that for 30 different students. So again, profile management we think will be an important part of being able to move this forward. You can experiment with readability features in our readability sandbox that exists on our website today. You can play with the five features that uh, Rick highlighted earlier, plus a few more things like column width or background color. It is important to note um, for those in the development community first that we've made the code available in GitHub. Um, it's available to anybody who would like to use it. And secondly, it's important to note that we used variable fonts to create these changes. Variable fonts are a new font technology, if you're not familiar with it. It is one font file with a whole bunch of instructions within it that allows you to create very granular control of features that are hard to control otherwise. Things like character weight, how bold is the font, and also um, character width, how wide is it? Can you widen it without distorting the characters? So, Variable fonts, we'd encourage you to pay attention to. That will be um, you know, an important technology for, for making uh, personalized reading solutions. So as much as uh, we talk to people about this and the value of this for education, we constantly get the question, you know, hey, that's great, glad you're working on this, but what can I start doing today while we're waiting for some of these technologies to be further developed? And we would say, ask for, readability features from your content providers. Start using them where they already exist. You can review the list um, of common reading platforms on our readability hacks page on our website and see features that are available. Adobe Reader is there and you can see all the features that they have already implemented as are you know, products from other big uh, tech providers, Google, Microsoft, et cetera. We would say offer format options on the content that you create. So rather than making just one document available to your students, perhaps you do two. One that is in a very standard Times New Roman type of a format and one perhaps with a very clean round font. We uh, like to point people to the free fonts uh, available from Google, Noto Sans and Montserrat are both fonts that we have found a lot of success with, particularly with struggling readers. Participate in readability research, reach out to us through the, through the virtual readability lab, you know, join those studies or any of the other research that, that we're currently running. We'd also have uh, you participate in implementation pilots. We are tech people. We need a lot of educators working with us to make sure that we're designing solutions that actually work well for education. So please join us. You can reach Kathy and I at South by Southwest at readabilitymatters.org. You can reach Rick at readable at adobe.com. You can also register for updates on our website. We don't send out a lot of email, but we're happy to keep you up to date that way. You can follow our social media. Most of all, we just hope that you will join our team. We look forward to making your students the best readers they can be. Thank you.